I'm going to open the 102nd meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to those who are here and also those who are joining us virtually. I'm going to immediately uh, turn the program over to our Executive Secretary, Rudy Pizzotti, who will lead us through the open session. Rudy. Thank you, Eric. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I want to remind the council members that this meeting is being live streamed and there is a recording that is being made and will be kept along with all previous open session council meetings dating back to, I think, 2011 or thereabouts. So uh, that'll keep you honest, uh, but will also allow the community to go back and review any of the discussions that we have today at the council. We have four new council members joining us. This is their initial meeting, and I'd like to introduce them uh, to the other members of the council. We're gonna start with Katrina Armstrong. Dr. Armstrong wears many hats. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Columbia University's medical campus, which includes the Vagilos College of Physicians and Surgeons, the School of Nursing, the College of Dental Medicine, and the Mailman School of Public Health. She is also the Executive Vice President for Health and Biomedical Sciences and the Dean of the Faculties of Health Sciences and the Vagilos College of Physicians and Surgeons. And Katrina, how many fires erupt on your desk every day? That's quite impressive. <laughs> Dr. Armstrong earned an undergraduate degree in architecture from Yale University, then an MD degree from Johns Hopkins and a master's degree of science in clinical epidemiology from the University of Pennsylvania. Katrina is an elected member of the National Academy of Medicine, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the American Society for Clinical Investigation. Dr. Armstrong's research interests have focused on health disparities and the social and economic factors that affect the dissemination of approaches and technologies that will improve cancer outcomes among Native American populations and BRCA1 and 2 testing in African American women. She's received a dozen awards from NIH, predominantly from the National Cancer Institute and the National Institute for Minority Health and Health Disparities, and she has a commendable record for peer review service to NIH. Welcome, Katrina. Uh, next, we welcome Kelly Frazier. Dr. Frazier is professor and chief of the Division of Genome Information Sciences in the Department of Pediatrics at the University of California, San Diego. She is also the director of the Institute for Genomic Medicine at UCSD. Dr. Frazier did her postdoctoral work at the University of California, San Francisco, and then spent several years at Perligen Sciences, where she was involved in the development of array-based genotyping technologies to identify genetic variations among samples in high-throughput formats. Kelly was involved in some of the earliest studies looking at cross-species DNA sequence comparisons between human and mouse and she played a major role in the development of the HapMap resource. Recently, Dr. Frazier's lab has assembled a resource of over 220 induced pluripotent stem cells derived from individuals that are racially and ethnic, ethnically highly diverse. Whole genome sequence data and multiomics data sets have been generated from these lines, enabling functional studies to be performed. Dr. Frazier has an impressive funding record, having received awards from multiple NIH institutes including the National Eye Institute, the National Cancer Institute, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, and NHGRI. She has an excellent record of service to peer review, having been on almost 30 panels, including four years on NHGRI's standing study section, Genome G. Welcome, Kelly. It's nice to be working with you again. Next, we, may, we welcome Casey Overby-Taylor, who's with us today in person. Dr. Overby-Taylor is an Associate Professor of Medicine and Biomedical Engineering in Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and Associate Director of the Institute for Computational Medicine. She also holds joint appointments as Associate Professor in the Department of Health Policy and Management in the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and the Department of Computer Science in John Hopkins Whiting School of Engineering. 
Dr. Overby Taylor obtained her doctoral degree in biomedical and health informatics from the University of Washington. Her postdoctoral work was done in George Herpsek's laboratory at Columbia University, where she explored using electronic health records to perform phenotyping and to track adverse drug events. Her current research interests are focused on using biomedical informatics and data science technologies to implement digital genomic health technologies into clinical practice, particularly for populations that are underserved and underrepresented in research. Dr. Overby Taylor has obtained research funding from multiple sources, including NHGRI, the National Institute for Minority Health and Health Disparities, National Institute on, ha on Aging, and the National Center for Advancing Translational Science, and the Agency for Healthcare and Research Quality. Casey has served on 20 peer review panels for NIH, including a four-year term as a standing member of the Biomedical Informatics Library and Data Science Review Committee Study Section. Welcome, Casey. And our last new council member is Bruce Korf. Dr. Korf holds the Wayne and Sarah Cruz Finley Endowed Chair in Medical Genetics at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Bruce is also the Associate Dean for Genomic Medicine and Distinguished Professor of Genetics at UAB. Bruce received his doctoral degree from Rockefeller University and his MD degree from Cornell University Medical College. He's board certified in medical genetics and clinical molecular genetics. Dr. Korf has an impressive record of service on advisory boards, including chair of the Clinical Care Advisory Board for the National Neurofibromatosis Foundation, chair of the Medical Advisory Committee for Children's Tumor Foundation, Chair of the Program Committee for the American College of Medical Genetics. He's also a member of the Board of Directors of the American College of Medical Genetics and a member of the Board of Directors for the American Society of Human Genetics. He's also served on the Board of Scientific Counselors for both the National Cancer Institute and NHGRI. He is also past president of the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. He served on numerous journal editorial boards and since 2017 has been the editor-in-chief for the American Journal of Human Genetics. Dr. Korf has an impressive funding record. He's received awards from NHGRI, All of Us, NINDS, NIGMS, and the U.S. Army and several private organizations and companies. He has participated in 46 NIH peer review panels or, or as a board of scientific counselor for NIH. Welcome, Bruce. I'd also like to acknowledge our society liaison members who are joining us remotely. Ellen Giarelli from the International Society of Nurses and Genetics, Georgia Boley from the Genetic Alliance, and Leila Jamal from the National Society of Genetic Counselors. There are two brief reports from the National Society of Genetic Counselors that were sent to us recently. If you follow the activities of this organization, I recommend these reports to you. Council members can find them in the electronic council books and the public can find them linked to the council webpage on the NHGRI website. I also want to acknowledge Jake Baroche sitting at the end of the table, program analyst at NHGRI. Jake will be our minute taker today and he will be responsible for preparing the minutes report for today's meeting. Council members, I seek your approval of the February 2024 council min minutes. Uh, are there any comments, uh, edits, or corrections that need to be made? Okay, can I get a vote? Thank you, Lynn. And seconds, all in favor, everybody loves the minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Future meeting dates. On the open session agenda, there are the six next council meeting dates. Please make sure these are on your calendars and let me know if there are any schedule conflicts. Um, I will remind you that the May and September meetings will always be held live here in Bethesda and the February meetings will always be held virtually. And with that, I will yield to Eric for the director's report.